Okay, so before we go through all the different key equations used in SUVAT, I'm going to quickly run you through all of the different variables within the equations and their units. So first of all is S, which is displacement. Now this is slightly different from distance because it's how far away from the, the starting point they are at the end of the time period. So you could imagine if you had a 100 meters running track and we start from this side and then there's the finish line. If my time period starts here and I run to that end and then I run back, well, at the end of our time period, I'm back where I started, so my displacement would be zero. Whereas my distance traveled, well, I went 100 meters this way and 100 meters this way. Um, so my distance travel will be 200 meters while my displacement is zero. So make sure you know the difference between the two because it can make a big difference when you come to solve questions. So displacement as an SI unit, we would use meters. Next, we have U, which is initial velocity. This is um, sort of like speed, but because it's a velocity, not speed, it has a direction. So for example, on this running track, I could run this way at 10 meters per second and then run this way at 10 meters per second. And you would probably say those are the same. The issue comes is because they're going in opposite directions. Okay, so if we took this direction as positive, then we'd actually have to say that this is minus 10 meters per second if we're talking about velocities. And again, SI units, so meters per second for that one. Next, we have V, which very similar to initial velocity. This is final velocity. So initial is the speed that it's traveling at at the start of our time period, the start of when we start monitoring a particle or whatever we're talking about. V is the final velocity, so whatever the velocity is at the end of our time period. And again, another velocity, so meters per second. Then we have A, which is acceleration. Acceleration, and that's in meters per second squared. So that's how fast something changes velocity. Um, so sort of a rate of change of velocity. Next, T, and the one that makes the most sense, time. And we're just going to measure that in seconds. Okay. So there's five equations that you're going to need to know. Um, the first of which is V equals U plus AT. So this is a good way of finding the final velocity if you know the initial, the acceleration, and the time taken. Okay. Next, you have S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So a good way of finding displacement, of course, you can rearrange these to find any of the variables within them. So in a, in a SUVAT um, problem, you'll be given three variables and asked to find a fourth or a fifth. So notice each one of these has four variables in. So in the first one, V, there's one. So one, U is another one, A is another variable, T. So you can see there's four variables. You would be, you'd be given three. So for example, you could, you could be given V, U and A, and then you'd have to try and solve it for T. You can rearrange it before if you like. I prefer to sub in the numbers and then solve it like a linear equation. Okay, so the other equations, we've done two so far. The other equations, first of which we have S equals half U plus V times T. So you can see here, this is sort of speed equals distance divided by time rearranged. But because we're doing half U plus V, we're taking the average velocity and times it by time to give displacement. So remember, this is displacement, not distance, because these are velocities, so have a direction. Next, we have v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So again, a good way of finding the final velocity if we're not given the time. Um, so you can see it uses every variable except the time. And then finally, we have s equals vt minus a half at squared. You can see these two are very, very similar, but originally we had Initial velocity, now we have final velocity, and then the sign here. So it was plus before, and now it's minus. So they're very similar, but they can use different variables, so it's important to know both. So paired equations of motion, we've got two cars driving on a motorway. We've got car one is in the slow lane at a constant rate of 50 miles per hour. Car two is overtaking from 160 meters behind, with an initial velocity of 60 miles per hour and an acceleration of plus two miles per hour per second. Take 160 meters equals 0.1 miles. Show that it will take approximately 36 seconds for car two to overtake car one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is write down all the variables. So we'll have S, U, V, 
A and T, and I'm going to put a little one, so S1, U1, V1, A1, T1, so we can tell when we're talking about car one and car two. So we're going to have S2, U2, V2, <clears throat> A2, and T2. Um, which bits of information do we know? Well, we're talking about a time period here, so let's just set um, S1 equal to X. So how far it travels in our time period will be equal to X. So then that means that um, for car two, it's X plus 160, okay? Because if they're going to eventually be sort of side by side, completely level, that's the point where car two overtakes, then they will have both traveled X distance, but S2 will have traveled a little bit further because it was already starting from behind. So car one's in the slow lane at a constant rate of 50 miles an hour. So this is going to be 50. Notice we're not working in SI units. Now that can be a bit of an issue, but because this is given in miles miles per hour, this is given in plus two miles per hour. Um, what what we can do, we can either change those into meters per second. It's not too hard to do, but I'm going to opt to instead change this to miles. As long as we're working in consistent units, so like miles per hour, miles, hours, and, and so on, it's not too bad. Okay, so... 160 meters is 0 0.1 miles as we're given there. So I'm going to change this to X plus 0 0.1. Okay. So we've got U1 is 50. V1 will also be 50 because it's a constant rate. So it doesn't get any quicker. It doesn't get any slower. A then will be zero because that's the acceleration of the first car. And again, if it's a constant rate, it's not changing. So acceleration must be zero. And T will just set next. We'll set equal to T. So they're both following the same time period. What else do we know about car two? Well, it's starting at 60 miles an hour. Okay. Final velocity, we don't know and we don't really care. Um, but we do know A2 is two. Um, so, right, we can, we can form some equations now. So I'm going to imagine I didn't know v V1. Even though we do know that it's going to be 50, it just makes it easier to spot which equation we're going to use. We've got S, we've got U, we've got A, and we've got T. So that means we're going to use S equals UT plus half AT squared. Now, it should cancel down pretty nicely. The reason being A is zero, so this whole term here is going to disappear. So we're going to have X equals UT. Well, U is 50. We don't know T, so X is 50T. Okay, so a very simple linear equation. It's not going to be quite as simple for the other one. Um, so we've got S, U, A, and T. So again, we're going to use S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. So we're going to have X plus 0.1 equals, well, U, T, so 60, T, plus a half A, T. So half of two is one. So plus T squared because half A, A is two. So half times two is one. So hence it's just T squared. Okay, so we've got two equations and we're trying to find T. So let's try and eliminate X. Well, quite nicely, this equation is X equals 50 T. So we can sub that in and we'll get 50 T plus 0.1 is 60 T plus T squared. Okay, now we're going to have to rearrange this to a normal quadratic. Of course, that means we want it equal to zero. Okay, so what we're going to what we're going to have at first is uh, we'll have t squared plus 10t minus 0 0.1, and that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, all done is taking away the 50t, take away the 0 0.1, so it's all on the right hand side. It's equal to zero. This is a normal quadratic to solve. You will of course get two solutions, so you'll get t equals 0 0.009 reoccurring hours. Remember, we're in hours here because we're working in miles per hour. And we'll also get t equals minus 10.009 reoccurring hours. We can get rid of this one because this is negative. If this was true, this would imply that car two had already overtaken car one. But we know that's that's not the case. Um, so it would already already overtaken by the time that we're talking about. Because if you can imagine it as sort of a, a timeline, that's here and we're here. So the overtake has already happened. So it's clearly wrong. Let's discount that. We don't really like negative times. Um, okay, so we've got this in hours, but notice it says show that it'll take approximately 36 seconds. So if you do 0 0.009 reoccurring times 60, that'll give you it in minutes. And then times it by 60 again, that'll give you it in seconds, which is 
35.96 seconds, which is pretty close to 36. So I'd say we've got it right there. So an important thing to remember when working with SUVAT, if any question says that it's accelerating under gravity, um, so it might say A equals G, well, this G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's just the standard measure of gravity. Some questions will say take gravity as 10 meters per second squared. They're just being a bit nice there, really. Um, this is a very important thing to remember. If you do physics, you might do it as 9.81. In maths, we just use one decimal place, 